Hi, we're Shannon and Jerry Arner. And our dog, Betty White. Your hosts of the Arner Adventures podcast. Could we have named it something more creative? Probably. But it's the name of our blog. It's our last name. We're on an adventure. Yada, yada, yada. After running our own business, working 24-7. And don't forget a mental breakdown in between. We made a lifestyle change and decided to make the most out of life. We sold our house, most of our belongings, downsized, and moved to the coast. We live life minimally, but fully. We live each day as an adventure. This show will help you learn how to live life more fully, with more intention, by experiencing more, and with less stuff. We'll talk about our own experiences, interview others who have much to share by creating a spark in our lives. Some days we'll share real life ongoings of what we're going through and others will talk about our favorite flavor of waffle. Come join our adventure. It's It's the the Arner Adventures Adventures Podcast. Podcast. Hello everybody, I'm Shannon. Jerry is not here, but my girl Betty White is here. She's at my feet if you're on YouTube. You don't see her either. She's down at my feet. She might make an appearance, (laughs) but we are back for episode 92 of the Arnold Adventures podcast. This is a very different podcast. I did say that last time Jerry wasn't on here, but this one's really different because I'm traveling with Betty White this week. We're on an adventure to uh, the North Carolina mountains where my parents now live. They retired and moved from the Raleigh area to the mountains. You know, they wanted to live in the mountains. We wanted to be on the beach. So we just cover all of North Carolina. Jerry obviously is not traveling with me and we are keeping this moving forward. And I thought, how great would it be if I just, you know, come out with it and talk about authenticity and how I feel like I'm not doing a good job lately of self-care. And so then I started thinking, gosh, I feel like I sort of get in this habit whenever I travel. So I started, you know, getting in this rabbit hole of research and looking at, you know, self-care while traveling. And anyway, I have come up with this whole routine and I also just wanted to, to be really open and honest with you guys, because I feel like that is what we've tried to do from the beginning, which is how this whole community developed. And, you know, um, that's kind of what this episode is going to be about today is self-care things that I know that have happened that, um, are sort of warning signs as to how I need to get it together. And, you know, we're just going to, move forward and hopefully this, some of the tips and tricks and things that I've learned and authenticity help you. Um, of course, if you are listening to this, if you could please do us a solid and leave us a five-star review or rating on the platform that you're listening to this on. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we would love it. If you would hit that subscribe button, maybe a like, maybe a comment, let us know what you think. Um, we would really appreciate it. All of that stuff helps support our podcast and really goes beyond as far as you can even imagine in this whole podcast world. So if you are looking at this, you see it is very different. I'm actually at my parents' house. You know, it's not set up for a podcast. I did bring my microphone, which you don't see. So hopefully this sound is okay. Um, I'm just, you know, sitting here in her living room and literally part of my self-care tonight was that I was not going to do any work. I'm not going to, you know, although the podcast is work, but I do sort of feel like I'm coming clean and talking to you guys about this. So first of all, if you know me or us at all, you know that we are very, very routine. We are so routine that we have Betty White on routine. She is just so, you know, routine and we thrive with our routine. With that being said, when we travel, we still try to stay on top of our routine of when we wake, you know, taking walks in the morning, making sure we get outside, experience things. You know, that was part of our whole lifestyle change. Um, And, you know, these past few weeks have been difficult. Um, you know, we told you guys a little bit about it a few weeks ago, and I almost don't want to get into it too much because I don't want to get down or really upset, but 
Um, we got some news about Betty. That was not great. And I've really struggled, like really struggled. Uh, you know, the last time that I had a complete, you know, there's no other word around it, just um, a breakdown was just that I was really burned out from work. Um, at the time we owned our business and our dog Pharrell passed away. When he passed away, it just, it, it just sort of, I don't know. It, it just did something to me. It was, it was the worst grief and loss I've ever dealt with. So, you know, that's another episode <laughs> that was actually, we've talked about that in another episode, but with all of that, it was just this catalyst of just helping us realize that we were in a place that was not great. We were not taking care of ourselves. We were not putting ourselves first. So we were, we were not even set up really to succeed if that, if that's what you call it with grief. And so with no self-care in place, with nothing that was there to help us, it was just, we were, we were just not in a situation that was going to be good unless we made these huge changes. Hence our whole lifestyle change. But with that was that self-care was priority. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that go into self-care. You know, we have a self-care checklist. You've probably seen them a thousand times and there's all these things that go into good self-care. Um, but what I've noticed is that ever since this happened with Betty and with my mind just being in a place where I'm, I'm scared it's going to, I'm going to sort of go down this hill. I'm doing everything that I can to stay in a good place. And it's taking so much energy to stay in a positive place. And I've been really drained and I've been, you know, I, I said to someone yesterday, I'm like, you can love what you do or you can hate what you do, but burnout is still the end of the road if you're doing it all the time. Right. So when I travel, like even being here, <laughs> Betty agrees, I have worked a whole lot and and a lot of this is just, um, I've just been not sleeping well. I've not been eating well. And then with that, you know, all those things that you do to practice good self-care just goes out the window. It just, it's like, I'm, I'm not setting myself up for anything to help me through this, even though it's like this really raw time. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to get my list together of the things I need to be doing the right way. And I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to have to be all the effort that I'm doing just to stay here in like a positive place. I'm going to put forth the effort to get my self-care into check, especially when I'm traveling and when I'm not home and I'm out of my routine. So the first thing that I have sort of on my list and I wanted to share is healthy eating and being prepared. Uh, you know, I mean, if I'm home and I'm not prepared, it, things can go out the window. But if you're traveling, whether you're flying, you're driving on a road trip, um, you know, you just have to have things into place. So uh, when I sort of had this mindset that I needed to get it together, I went to the grocery store here and I got my regular, you know, salads and fruits and vegetables and having greens and things that are really beautiful and things that I can prepare and feel really good about. And also feel good that I'm putting it into my body because if I feel like shit and I'm putting shit into my body, I'm just feeding the shit, you know? So we wanted to take a minute to tell you about one of our sponsors, but we love them is Sugar Wish. Yes. Yeah, Sugar Wish has been a big part of our journey here with Honor Ventures. Mm -hmm. We... We love their products. We do. What we love most is that it's a sustainable gift, right? All you need to do is send someone an email and you pick sort of a price point with Sugar Wish and you can, you know, choose from, you can either choose the different categories like candy, snacks, Betty's favorite. Betty's dog treats. Dog treats. If you want to send a dog, mm -hmm. um, a special little gift, all you do is um, go in there and choose the category. And the per the recipient gets to choose whatever gift that they want. I mean, what is there not to love about that? 
well, yeah, that makes it really neat. You're, you're getting a gift, but you're also getting choices with, right. within a broader uh, uh, spectrum and you can choose your own gift. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I just think we've, the feedback we always get from people who receive it, it's just always, wow, great. You know, you kind of made somebody's day. So that's, that's always fun. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. I love that it's called Sugar Wish. It's yeah. sort of appropriate. Mm -hmm. Something that we did not mention is wine. Vine, Vine box. box. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath Sugar Wish yeah. is sort of a another it's like the, it's their company it's like another name but if you go to the sugar wish website you can definitely order it but it's vine box and you can send someone these like little tubes and they're, they're like test tubes they are they're, test they're tubes kind of fun. Yeah. but they're like mm -hmm. a tasting of different wines mm -hmm. and we love it because you just pour the tube and like your glass and it's a glass of wine it's like a wine flight like like yes. you're getting a beer flight in a restaurant oh my gosh a little, a that's little exactly what it's yeah. like yeah. Yeah. And there's something about that. I think people love that kind of variety. Like I get to have a taste of all those different ones. That's, That's right. Exciting for a lot. We have sent them <laughs> as thank you gifts. We've uh -huh. sent them as like a home. Uh, what do you like a housewarming <laughs> gift? Housewarming. Yeah. Uh, people who adopt new doggies, uh, all kinds of different things, any, any holiday. And if it's last minute, that's okay because they get the email the same day that you that you want to send it. That's right. Well, don't miss out on the opportunity to try it out. You can save $7 off of your gift to someone. You just use the code ADVENTURE during your checkout. And for the easy way to get to it is to go to rnartventures.com slash sugarwish, which is also in the show notes. Yeah, and get ready to make someone stay with a delightful gift. Now let's dive back into the show. So I also want to talk about if you're flying, you know, there's this whole thing about if you're flying, oh my God, what kind of snack are you going to eat on the plane? And God forbid you go the whole flight and not eat anything. I mean, you know, and I used to be that way too. It was like, you know, I need to get something in the airport and, you know, have some drinks and then I'm going to go on the plane. I'm going to take whatever snacks they're offering or whatever. And you just have to be prepared so you can, you know, have your own little snacks or you can not eat on the plane and then when you land have a plan for if you're at a hotel or if you're staying you know somewhere else you can just have a plan of where you're going to go and get food you know, I, I haven't been anywhere in the entire world that i've been to traveled i know there are places in the world that don't have fresh food like food deserts but i've never traveled somewhere where i couldn't go and find a healthy meal especially not eating meat. It's funny. People just are always like, well, what do you eat when you travel? Well, not everybody has meat. I mean, you can have fruits and vegetables when you travel. So anyway, I just think being prepared, whether you're at home, whether you're traveling is just super important. And so I have made a special effort here to make sure that I went out after a few days of just not doing well, I went out and got myself prepared. And now you know, I had to get Betty prepared for her food. So why not get myself prepared? Um, the other thing that is super important, and we just talked about with the routines, is staying active even away from home. So usually if I'm traveling somewhere where I intently go there to, you know, experience the place, which I do here too, uh, I'm walking a ton. Uh, with Betty, I brought her here, so I didn't even really explain why I'm here, but my parents are on a Virgin Voyages cruise, which, as you know, we know are amazing, um, but they're in Greece, and so while they're gone, I decided I was going to stay here at her home with her dogs, and there was no intention of bringing Betty because I was going to keep Betty in her own routine, and then, you know, we got this news about Betty, and there was no way... I could leave her for 10, 50, whatever amount of days it is selfishly. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Terry can very well take care of her and she'd be great. But, you know, I work at home with her all day long and with her. I've been with her now almost 24 seven since right before COVID. So I selfishly couldn't deal with it. So I brought her along and we made the trek over. And so now we're in the mountains. And anywho, now that I'm here, I don't have her stroller. Now they do have a stroller, but they don't live on a street that's easily. I can, look, I can't stand excuses. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses. I'll just tell you that I did not make a special effort to get out and do our walks. So who suffers? Me and Betty. 
So once I started getting my funk and realizing that I needed to make a change, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, my parents' truck is here. I'm going to put that stroller that they have for the littles and I'm going to put it in the back of that truck and I'm going to go to, there's a local walking park and we're going to go and walk. And so damn it, we did. So you have to adapt to your environment, whether you're in the mountains, whether you're, you know, in New York, God, you can get your walking in in New York, but you may be somewhere that, you know, um, doesn't have great areas to walk, but maybe there's a gym. So you can go and do that. And, you know, with walking, it's the most effective way to stay not only physically healthy, because, you know, it's not like you have to go find a gym and exercise and all that, but you can explore. It's really good for your mental health. It's great for my mental health. So it's something that when I don't do, and I've talked about this before, when I don't do it, I really feel it. And I was feeling it mentally. So I got it back on the right foot. That's a little pun. Hey, well, it's that time of year again, and we can't wait to tell you about our very favorite soy candles from Southern Oak Artisan. Yes, they're a trusted mm -hmm. sponsor of the episode, have been for a while, but we love their products. They are 100% natural soy candles. One of the things that we love any time of year, but especially in the cozy season, are our candles all around the house. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and you're right, all, all times of year. In fact, in, in the summertime, sometimes we hate that we don't feel we can light them because it's just too warm. But man, it takes a lot not to light those candles. Yeah. Uh, and these candles are made with non-toxic ingredients and mm -hmm. it just which makes for a safe and enjoyable breathing around the house. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. They have pumpkin scents this time of year, apple. There's some seasonal things for the fall and the winter. And it, they are non-toxic, like Jerry said. They're not overpowering scents. They're clean. And they come in these little jars that once you burn it, by the way, soy burns clean. So you can reuse the jars for, I don't know, you can uh, put some seedlings in there. You can put um, your some earrings and jewelry in there, whatever you want to mm -hmm. do, storage in the kitchen. It's just really nice. Oh, and they look good anywhere. They would look good anywhere in your house, whatever they're doing. Yeah. Uh, super nice. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to take advantage of a discount that Southern Oak Artisan is extending to you, go to arneradventures.com slash Southern Oak Artisan, or you can make sure that you go to our show notes where it will be linked there. There you go. Uh, but when you're in a new city, that's the best way to explore the culture, the, you know, explore in, immerse yourself in, in your environment and everything around you. And so um, we did that too. We took a drive to the Blue Ridge Parkway and took a little hike. I got some weight, some weight lifting in because I carried her a lot of the way. <laughs> so anyway, walking and exploring is a really great way to exercise and for great self-care. The other thing that you can do, and I've done this in hotels before, is uh, exercise videos and apps that you can pull in on the TV or you can put in your laptop or whatever. And, you know, you don't need any equipment. You can download something on your smartphone. You'll have a personal trainer right in your pocket. They can guide you through workouts. There are a ton of YouTube videos that are free. I love like hip hop dancing workouts. I had, I hired this um, trainer gal on Fiverr and she created a workout for me just for me that has all of my favorite Post Malone playlist songs on it. What? Yes, you can do that. I'll link it down in the show notes. It was amazing. So I have it on my Google Drive and I can just play it and work out if I want to. So there was really no excuses for me at all, period. So you can do that too. You can also do yoga, which is really good um, for, you know, the way to start your day, stretching, all of that. And with that being said, we just talked about this with the Sarah Horgan podcast that just happened last week is meditation. That was another thing I just completely dropped the ball on just like a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, Sarah made a really good point that when you meditate, and you have a mindfulness practice of being grateful, you 
are setting yourself up to be able to maneuver through those challenges. So for me to get some news about Betty and feel like I wasn't going to be able to handle it and just stop all of the things that were good self-care does not make sense. I mean, but it's also a part of, you know, my poor mental health and my mental health is something that I'm constantly working on. You know, am I, am I heads and tails above where I was, you know, even a couple of years ago? Absolutely. Am I 100%? No. You know, I I mean, I just feel like I, I think I'm always going to be working on my anxiety, my depression, my maneuvering through really challenging times. And that's okay. You know, it's okay. So part of my self-care is my meditation and starting my mornings out and having that whole routine. And, you know, when you travel, mindful traveling is something that is really great about, you know, enriching your soul, having a deeper appreciation of the world around you and, you know, having the mindfulness to experience these profound things that may not seem so profound, but they are, you know, if you, if you do practice mindful traveling and you're, you're just really mindful about it when you travel and you just stop, And you just say, you know, and I do this in New York a lot. I think just New York is just iconic. It's just somewhere I just love, love, love. And it never gets old. And I can just stand anywhere in New York. And you can, there's just so much history around you. And you can just feel it. But it's also that way, like if you go to Europe, there's there's so much history there that we don't, you know, so much things that were built there are so much older than the US. And you can just feel it. It's just palpable. So I think if you just stop and you take in the environment around you, be really mindful about it. It's really good for your mental health and it's good for, you know, self-care because you're stopping and, you know, same thing with like mindful eating, which I know we talked about healthy food, but when you are eating and you're, you know, experiencing food and, um, you know, flavors in different areas. If you're, if you stop and you're mindful about it and savor each bite, it's just an experience and you can engage in conversation with the people who made it and find out more about, you know, the, again, the culture, the cuisine and all of that. So look, I'll be the first one to take pictures of my food. And that's so annoying to some people, but I'm like, what if I want to tell somebody about this restaurant and a blog? I want to make sure I have plenty of photos, but I'm trying now to go, okay, let me get the photos I want. And it's like when I was on the Blue Ridge Parkway with Betty yesterday, I was like, oh my God, I got to get all these photos of Betty with the mountains in the back and I have to, I have to capture all of these moments. And then I was like, Shannon, just put the phone down and experience this with Betty and enjoy this time with her. And let her take in the moment with you. And so it just put me sort of a mindset that I need to do that more when I'm traveling. So mindfulness for sure during travel. Um, I think, you know, we've talked before about how stressful it can be, even if you don't have other things going on, which everybody has things going on, but how stressful it can be just getting prepared to travel and whether it's a road trip, whether it's a plane trip, whatever it is, you know, you're especially airports, that whole airport anxiety, it's a thing. And there's studies that show, you know, it it really is a thing. You're constantly hurrying, whether you're in a hurry or not, you're constantly hurrying through the airport and it feels so stressful. So you're already setting everything up to be so tight and rigid and, oh my gosh, just, you know, stressful. So taking the time and doing the five, four, three, two, one, which I think we've talked about this before. It's just a quick little meditation. I'll link it in the show notes. If you just stop and do that, you realize, okay, you know, 
if somebody behind me is in a rush, just let them go ahead of me. It's no big deal. And if you have TSA pre-check, it's really not that big of a deal. <laughs> um, so when you're getting ready to travel, set yourself up just like the food, just like everything else and be prepared. So you can have, you know, strategies that you put into place for breathing. You can have your snacks. You can have, if you're going to like, you know, with me, you all may think this is nuts. If people try, when people travel with me, they think it is absolutely insane until they have the best night of sleep they've ever had. I take, whenever I travel, I take black tape with me and I have it in my suitcase and I have my eye shade thing because I do not sleep well when there's those blue lights or LED lights or like the clock or if there's anything on in a hotel room or a house I'm staying in or anything, I'm unplugging things in that room because I can't sleep. Like it's like I can't sleep with the TV on. I can't sleep with um, any of those, even if it's a tiny little blue light that comes from, I don't know, just anything, the, the TV that's off, you know, but it still has that little light. I put black tape over it. If I can't unplug it, I'm putting black tape over it. And sometimes I remember to take it off, but sometimes I don't. And I'm sure that housekeeping or whoever comes in after me is like, what the hell? But I don't care. And people will make fun of me if they travel with me. My sister and I went to see Post Malone. He's coming up a lot in this episode. And while we were there, we stayed at a hotel and I'm just walking around, just covering up all the things. And, but she knew. She knew that she slept better that night too. So do whatever you need to do to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success. I did it here at my parents' house. They have a TV that's mounted in the corner of the guest room. And I turn, I can turn it against the wall so I don't see that light. And I put black tape over it. You know, do whatever you need to do. Set yourself up for success. And if you have you know, self-care routines or rituals or things that you do at home. The thing that I have learned, especially this time when it's really hitting home and something that I'm really struggling with is that I have to keep those things into place. Even if you're not as routine oriented as I am, having those things, those practices, those rituals, those routines in place and sticking to them as much as possible is just really helpful. And like Sarah Horgan said, when you put these things into place and you meditate and you are mindful and you're doing everything you can to put your self-care first, you're setting yourself up to be able to maneuver through the challenges. And I know that I have challenges ahead of me and instead of putting the work and effort to just stay positive in whatever weird way that I think I'm just going to, you know, oh, just be positive, Shana, be positive. Instead, maybe put that, those effort and that strength towards taking care of myself. And then I think that after that, I will be able to maneuver through the challenges that are coming my way. Because look, I mean, at the end of the day, I know that that challenge that I know is coming is not the only challenge that's coming. You know, I also had a conversation with someone this morning who talked about when she let stress and things get to her, she, you know, got a diagnosis that was not great, just like Sarah. And I'll have to link to Sarah's podcast down there too, just so that, cause I keep bringing it up. So if you're listening to this and you didn't hear that one, that you definitely should. Um, but stress and, and I should know I'm the very one who had a complete breakdown. So I should know what stress and what toxic thinking does to you physically. And I've come so far. I know that. And I want to continue having things set up to where I'm in a good place. And I just wanted to share that information because I think it is helpful to share self-care tips while you're traveling. 
but I also wanted to just be completely clear about why I have this list and why it wasn't just something I was trying to figure out for a podcast to slide in. I mean, I was actually, I had a whole other plan (laughs) for the podcast. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to put it out there. And so I never regret when I do. So I'm glad that I did. And hopefully, you know, this helps you or helps someone. If it does, share it with them. Um, And I think it'll sort of hold me accountable too. So thank you for allowing me to spill all of that while also, uh, you know, being helpful, hopefully, and sharing some information that has helped me in the past and it's going to help me now. And when you travel on a light note, when you travel again and you want to make sure that you come home and you're not feeling really crappy and you didn't take care of yourself, put these things into place and, you know, hopefully you'll be in a really good place when you get home and happy, mindful traveling. If this episode resonated with you, or if you know of someone who would benefit from anything we talked about today, or any episode, our guests, or anything, please share it with a friend. It's a great way of supporting the podcast and us, and we really appreciate it. Another way of supporting the pod is by leaving us a five-star reviewer rating on the platform you're listening to us on. Oh, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that also supports us. We would love that. You can always find us, links we refer to during the show, and any of the podcast sponsors at arneradventures.com or linked here in these show notes. And until next time, enjoy that journey you're on. We're wishing you lots of adventures. Adios. Arrivederci. Au revoir. Adios. Uh, sayonara. Alvida uh, Dos vidiniana. And adios. <laughs>